ever feel like you're just drowning in research, like trying to understand all the articles on one topic? Yeah, they... That's what systematic literature reviews are trying to do. Right. And AI is coming in to help. Absolutely. It's really interesting. These reviews are really important for a lot of different fields. Yeah. They're like the foundation for figuring out what we know and what we don't know yet. Right. But they take so long. Forever. It's a ton of effort. Years and years. But what if I told you we could get that down to weeks? Really? That's what we're looking at in this deep dive. Wow. We have this paper from the Euromed Journal of Business. Okay. It just came out in August 2024. Uh -huh. And it talks about how AI is totally changing these reviews. Yeah, they're finding some pretty amazing results. Yeah. One study they talked about got a full systematic review done in just two weeks oh, using AI. Really... It was a small team. Okay. Really focused. Yeah. And they used these AI tools in a smart way. Right. But it makes you think, could this be how we do research in the future? That's amazing. Yeah. All the time you'd save. Right. You could do so many more projects. Totally. And it's not just about speed. No. It's about making the reviews better, too. Yeah. The paper talks about that, too. Exactly. It's about using the best of AI and the best of human researchers yes. together. It's that collaboration that's really key. So AI isn't replacing researchers. No. It's giving them superpowers. Exactly. It's like having a research assistant who can go through tons of articles super fast uh -huh. and pull out all the important facts. Yeah. And then the researcher can focus on the bigger picture. Right. The analysis, the interpretation. The stuff that humans are really good at. Yeah. And it's not just about doing the boring stuff. Right. AI can actually make the quality of the reviews better. Okay. Like think about when you're reading a study. Yeah. And something seems off. Uh-huh. Maybe there's bias you didn't notice at first. Like if the study was funded by a company that would make money from the results. Yeah, exactly. Oh. We miss things like that sometimes. But AI can be trained to spot them. Okay. So the review ends up more accurate. That makes sense. More reliable. So how does AI actually do this? Well, there are a lot of tools and techniques. Okay. One of the big ones is machine learning. Okay. Or ML. ML. It's like teaching a computer to learn from data. Uh -huh. We feed it a ton of research articles oh, so boy. it can figure out the patterns. Yeah and make predictions about what's important. So instead of me reading through all those abstracts, right. the AI can do it. Exactly. You're a time saver. And it uses the same criteria every time. Okay. Which also helps with reducing bias. Makes sense. And then ML usually works with natural language processing. NLP. Yes. That's how computers understand what we're saying. Right. Not just matching keywords, mm -hmm. but actually bidding the meaning. Exactly. Okay. So NLP lets the AI really break down those complicated research articles. Right. Find the main ideas and how they connect. Uh, and even summarize the findings wow. in a way we can understand. This is like something from the future. Right. And then the paper mentions these living systematic reviews. Oh, yeah. What are those? So imagine a review that's always changing. Okay. Always up to date. Wow. With the latest research. Okay. That's what living systematic reviews are. Mm -hmm. AI can keep track of the research databases. Right. Find new publications that fit the review. Yeah. And add those findings in. So it's not just a static report that gets old. Nope. It's always changing. It's like a living document. That's incredible. It is. Especially for fields that are changing really fast. Exactly. Like infectious diseases where there are always new treatments and discoveries. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it really changes how we think about research. So much faster. Right. But let's talk about the tech for a minute. This living review thing, yeah. how does the AI actually do it? AI is really good at seeing patterns and connections. Mm -hmm. So once you've decided what your review is about okay. and what should be included, yep. the AI can scan all those research databases okay. for new publications. Got it. That fit. So it's like a research assistant who never sleeps. Right. Just reading and sorting articles. Exactly. Like, and it's not just finding them. Uh -huh. It's taking out the important data, uh -huh. analyzing it, yeah. and adding it into the review. Okay. It all happens in the background. Seamless. Keeping learning. the review up to date. So we've talked about machine learning yeah. and natural language processing. Right. What other AI stuff are researchers using? Oh, there are a lot. For these reviews. Yeah. One that's really interesting is text mining. Text mining. Think of it like data mining. Okay. But for text. So we're digging for insights instead of gold. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. In a mountain of papers. It, exactly. Right. So these text mining techniques can find patterns and trends uh -huh. in all that research. Okay. See connections between studies. Yeah. Even come up with new hypotheses. 
So it's not just about summarizing what we know. Yeah. It's about finding new things to research. Exactly. That's a cool. And there are a lot of software tools out there to help researchers with this. Oh, really? Yeah. So I don't need to be a coding expert. No, not at all. To use this AI stuff. Nope. There are user-friendly tools okay. that make it pretty easy to use AI. And the paper mentions a few. Right. It talks about Swift Review. Oh, yeah. Robot Reviewer. I've heard of that. And Abstractions. Are those the ones they used in that two-week review? Some of them, yeah. Oh, wow. But these tools are always changing. Makes sense. New AI applications are coming out all the time. So it's a really fast-moving field. It is. But even with all these great tools, yeah. I imagine human experts are still really important. Absolutely. AI can do a lot of the work, but humans still need to make decisions. Like what? Like what the review should be about, uh -huh. which AI tools to use, yeah. and what the findings actually mean. So it's not just set it and forget it with yeah. AI. No, you need a human in charge. Guiding everything. Making sure the AI is doing the right things. So it's really a partnership yes. between human intelligence and artificial intelligence. Working together. Okay. We've talked about a lot. We have. The benefits of using AI for these reviews. Uh -huh. The different AI techniques. Right. And how important it is to have human oversight. Yeah. What about the bigger picture? What do you mean? How is all this changing research in general? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. I think one of the biggest impacts is how fast we can do these reviews now. Like we talked about. What well, used to take years. Right. Now it takes weeks. So we get answers faster. Yeah. Which means... Which means we can... Develop new treatments. Exactly. Make better policy decisions. Uh -huh. Address global challenges. And make those decisions based on the latest research. Right. Think about being able to summarize all the research on climate change. Wow. Or new diseases. That would be incredible. So much potential for making better decisions. It feels like a huge shift in how research is done. It does. And how it's shared. Yeah. But with any new technology. Yeah, there are always downsides. What are some things we need to be careful about? Well, the paper talks about bias. Bias? Yeah, from the data used to train the AI. Oh, so if the data is biased, right. the AI will be biased too. It can inherit those biases without us realizing it. So like if the AI is mostly trained on research from one country yeah. or from studies funded by a specific industry, exactly. that could affect the review. It could. Wow, that's a good point. So we need to be really careful about the data. Yeah. Make sure it's diverse and representative. And we need to be checking the AI's work. Yes, always evaluating the output. Making sure it's ethical. Exactly, making sure it aligns with our standards. It's like we need to be as careful with the AI's data as we are with our own research data. Yeah, garbage in, garbage out, right? Exactly. That's why it's so important to have humans involved. Right. We can't just trust the AI completely. We need to keep checking its work. Yes, looking for those biases. And make sure it's ethical. Making sure it's doing good science. So it's really a team effort. It is a collaboration. Between humans and these powerful AI tools. And when it works well, yeah. it can be really amazing. The paper talks about some examples. It does. Of how AI reviews are already making a difference. In the real world. Like what? Tell me about something. Well, there was one in software engineering okay. that I thought was really interesting. Yeah. They were trying to understand all the research on software testing okay. and cost estimation. Uh -huh. There's just so much research out there. It's a huge field. It is. And it changes so fast. All the time. New technologies, new approaches. It's hard to keep up. Even for experts. Right. So how do they use AI? They used AI and text mining okay. to analyze a ton of research papers. Wow. And they found some interesting patterns and trends. That they wouldn't have seen without the AI. It would have been really difficult. Because there was just too much data. Exactly. So the AI helped them see the bigger picture. Yes. It helped them make sense of all that information. And then they can use those insights. To make better software. More efficient. More cost effective. That's a great example. What about biomedicine? Oh, yeah. Have they used AI for reviews in biomedicine? They have. Cool. There was this one review. Okay about a specific disease uh -huh. and they needed to summarize all the findings oh, wow. from every study. That sounds like a lot of work. It was a huge project. Reading all those papers and summarizing them? Yeah, it would have taken forever. So what did they do? They used this special language model. What was it called? BioBert. BioBert. It's specifically trained on biomedical research.
So it's like a super smart research assistant. Yes. That can read and understand these complex studies. Much faster than a human. And it can summarize them. Yes, and it was really accurate. Wow. The summaries were really good. So it saved them a ton of time. A ton of time. And then they could focus on the more interesting stuff. The analysis. The interpretation. Exactly. It's amazing how much AI is changing research. It's incredible. It's making it faster, more efficient. But more insightful, too. And then there's that two-week review we talked about. That was pretty impressive. It really makes you think about what's possible. If we can do these big reviews in weeks instead of years, yeah. think about how much faster science could move. We could solve so many problems. Make so many discoveries. It's exciting. It is. And a little bit scary. Yeah, it's a big change. It feels like a whole new era of research. It does, and I think the most important thing to remember Yeah is that AI is a tool. Right. It's a powerful tool. It's still a tool. We need to use it responsibly. Ethically. In a way that helps everyone. I think that's a great point to end on. AI is changing everything. And systematic reviews are just one example. It's up to us to use this technology the right way. To make sure it's a force for good. So keep learning about this stuff. Ask questions. Be part of the conversation. Let's shape the future of research together. For the benefit of all. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. It was great to be here. We'll see you next time.